There are a lot of expectation in President Aquino's State of the Nation address later. It is the last stretch for him. The sauna is one of the last two he will deliver before he steps down in 2016. Now with dipping popularity, a flurry of impeachment complaints and his administration's spending program under fire. Is this a make or break sauna for the chief executive? Well, let's get the opinion of an expert. Joining us this morning is political analyst Dindo Manhit. Good morning to you, Dindo. Good morning. Hilary. Welcome Good morning, to Dave. Good morning. Good morning. Right. So uh, first question, which is nagging at all of us this morning, is uh, there are a lot of issues hounding the president's administration. Now, how vital is this sauna to President Aquino? It is a sauna that can be used by the president to redefine his presidency. Mm -hmm. If you would look back a year from ago, mm -hmm. you realize that he came out in the 2013 election very strong, 76% mm -hmm. approval rating. Mm -hmm. Now, in less than a year, it's down to 55%. Right. And you have two years to go, and you need to define where your legacy should be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That means he need to use this sauna to think more strategically instead of being defensive. Right. The DAP issue this past few weeks, you have seen the president, I think, really being shocked by the performance rating that he got, getting hit by it, the DAP uh, right. decision by the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. It placed him so much in the defensive that even other institutions, he started attacking. Yes. Instead of going beyond it, seeing himself as a president for a nation, mm -hmm. elected legitimately in 2010, popular still at 55%, mm -hmm. four years into office, he needs to lead us mm -hmm. instead of defending, covering up for some of the failures of his presidency. Sure. So do you think um, him tackling or discussing the DAP controversy during this sauna will, um, um, would be a negative, would I, have a negative effect on He his needs to address it, but he, doesn't, he needs to be more transparent mm. and he needs to make people accountable for mm -hmm. the wrong actions done in his government. Mm -hmm. Cabinet needs to take responsibility if there are failures, if there are really violations of law. Right. So he needs to use the sauna to really make a roadmap. Mm -hmm. We can be more transparent, get commission an audit really to fast track their auditing of mm -hmm. these projects. Because the problem is that I personally believe that there's no anomaly here. There might be some constitutional problems in terms of uh, moving one fund to the other. But mm -hmm. this is totally different from the pork barrel issue, mm -hmm. where there was actual stealing right. and no projects at all. Mm -hmm. so no delivery. No yes. delivery. In this case, we have seen projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's been identified. So we need to show to the public that this government made a mistake maybe in reallocating funds, right. but had the intentions of making things happen mm -hmm. to create a stimulus for our economy right. in 2012. So what yeah. do you think, what, what issues do you think that um, w w should he talk about that would um, make him or what, what would people like to hear? Very critical this beyond DAP, beyond PDAF, beyond all this impeachment is the reality that the most basic problem of our people right now is poverty. Mm -hmm. It's the jobless growth. Now, ironically or paradox is that the past four years of growth has not translated into concrete jobs mm -hmm. and has improved the lives of our people. Right. Inequality is still up. And because of that, majority of our people feel poor. Your report mm, earlier yes, about that's SWS, right. mm -hmm. that's actually 12 million people. If you go beyond the percentage, 12 million adults feel poor. Wow. Translate that into to the families that mm -hmm. is part of their lives. Mm -hmm. Imagine how many, how many mouths, many, feed, how many mouths yeah. millions of people mm -hmm. feel poor. Mm. And the only solution to that is how can we translate this consumption-driven growth which is the basis of the economic growth, to an investment-driven growth mm -hmm. that will create jobs and improve the lives of our people. Mm -hmm. I think that's where the government needs to focus their attention. I mean, move beyond politics and divisiveness. Mm -hmm. And the defensive really for, stance. Yes, yeah. I really look forward into last two years, Mr. President. What is the legacy that I will leave this country? Where will I bring the country by 2016? So when my successor comes and takes over, he can build on it. Mm -hmm. instead of playing politics and being divisive about it. Right. Uh, you, you did mention him having a defensive stance through all this. Now, do you think the president should worry about his dwindling public satisfaction rating? It's still high at 55, mm -hmm. 54, mm -hmm. trust rating of 53. Mm -hmm. But he has time to, to build on it and really leave the presidency by 2016 stronger, more right. popular, than more trusted than the previous one. Yes. Then he can define really that this is the presidency that we deserve. 
that the next president that comes after mm -hmm. him should be based compared to him. The problem kasi with the president is that he came from a low expectation. Mababa ang tingin natin kay Gloria Macapagal-Arroyo. Uh -huh. So he went up. I think mm -hmm. it gave him comfort mm -hmm. that he was doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. But it was based on his popularity and personality, mm -hmm. which is wrong because we need institutional change and reforms in this country. That's right. And that's where he can lead us. Mm -hmm. At 55%, he can still build on it. Use this political capital, the trust that people have in him, highest than any president. Right. I think mm -hmm. since polling or survey was introduced in our, in our country with regards to governance. So that means he can use that popularity and build on it and lay down the next two years. This sauna is important because come next year, it's election noise that's already. Right. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's, let's bring out a report card on the president, if you will. How would you rate him in terms of, uh, for example, the disaster mitigation, the disasters we've faced recently? How would you rate him on that? Uh, I think they have done their best, but they need to be more responsive because of the realities of climate change. Mm -hmm. So they need to be more responsive. And what we saw last year, especially with Yolanda, was it was too much reporting, but not really reacting responding as mm -hmm. fast as they could right right so or pro action pro action yeah. really to pre mm -hmm. to prepare ourselves to the realities of this climate change that we're experiencing. Mm -hmm. So do you think that with this sauna, because during his presidency, especially in the recent years that he was faced with all this these disasters, um, do you think in this sauna it's a, it's a, it's very important for him to tackle the rehabilitation progress that's happening in the disaster stricken areas? He needs to define for us what he plans to do with these disaster areas. You know, we saw last year really uh, a unique situation in our country. Earthquake, mm -hmm. strong storms, mm -hmm. even man-made disaster in Samuanga. Mm -hmm. We need government to be responsive at that level, mm -hmm. the community level. Mm -hmm. We right. need government to be felt at that level. Mm -hmm. It's beyond really disaster. It's really actual delivery of basic social services coming from government. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One to ten, how would you, ten being the highest, what number would you rate the president in that department? Oh, I think uh, maybe six out of ten. That would be a generous six. Yes, a generous, six, <laughs> a generous yes. six. Because things should be done. Sure. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about good governance. Mm -hmm. Good governance, it's still quite good, maybe a seven, mm -hmm. but he really needs to make people account. He's been defending his members of cabinet. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, heads will roll yes. if you don't do your job. Everybody's hiding behind the president. Sure. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is that every time they speak of the management style of the president, he says he likes to delegate to his cabinet secretaries. Mm -hmm. How come when Which there's a problem? Yeah, it it's doesn't a look like that. I'm a professor of public administration. That's a contradiction. How can you delegate mm -hmm. but not make these people accountable? That's right. Very good point. That's a mm -hmm. very yeah. good point. And then law enforcement as well. Let's law bring that into the picture. Oh, law enforcement mm -hmm. is quite uh, frustrating. I think we see the rise of criminality in the urban area. So. Mm -hmm. And the unsolved the six, cases, think, the human yeah. rights issues, humanitarian like the crisis, Maguindanao, yes. right, yes. and the Zamboanga yes. siege. He, people expected more from him. Mm -hmm. Sure. He was not part of the government. He, we saw him as an alternative to the previous uh, style of governance where political personalities are protected. Mm -hmm. So we were hoping that he could have acted more uh, in terms of peace and order, crime which uh, which affects the personal security of our own citizens what number would you give him oh that's i think that. lower than six okay <laughs> <laughs> not okay. feeling generous yeah, there. No, no, yeah. Not feeling now, generous. people are expected um expecting him to highlight his economic reforms um, within his uh, presidency so and he did say that the country now is one of the fastest growing economies in the world do you do you agree with that it, when you look at numbers it is seven point six seven point eight mm -hmm. last year was strong the challenge is, can you sustain it? Hmm. And can you translate that into better lives for our hmm, people? That's right. Quality that's where his problem life. is. So you rate him, maybe seven, but we need to transform it into improving the lives and addressing the inequality for mm -hmm. our people. Especially those in the, in the bottom yes. rung. They, they're the ones who need because to feel the, the, the day, improvement. The population reflects what our nation is. Mm -hmm. They're your future well consumers. Mm -hmm. So you build on that consumer. You can just imagine the growth rate that we can have. But mm -hmm. keeping them away from economic productivity, that's, that's a problem. That's mm -hmm. a scene of any president. Mm -hmm. True. Now, lastly, um, after this sauna, um, what do you think, uh, how do you think people will respond to, uh, to the president? There will be always be criti people critical of the president. People who have filed the impeachment are quite, if you analyze it, 
they come from the same group. So if I was, <laughs> if you analyze, right. nobody has looked at it that way. We just make it as in nation that it's three impeachment. But no, mm -hmm. they come from one block of Congress that numbers nine people. Mm -hmm. There are more than 280 members of Congress. Right. There are more than 100, as I've said, 100 million people now. So the challenge really is for the president to lead us, to lead us to an investment driven growth that will create jobs, mm -hmm. that will address poverty and inequality in our country, mm -hmm. to institutionalize transparency through maybe an FOI law, mm -hmm. yeah. make people accountable based on performance, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. make people accountable in terms of if there are corruption. Mm -hmm. So that at the end of the day, you create an investment environment that mm -hmm. will create jobs and right. improve the lives of our people. And give the law more teeth yes. you know, to make people feel secure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, thank we you really so much for your yeah. time with us this morning. Thank we you appreciate also. your, you know, how you really lay it out. I, we can feel the emphatic fierceness <laughs> um, in there for good yeah. change in our country. I'm just an ordinary citizen hoping that change can happen in our country. True. Mm -hmm. And share the same sentiments. Exactly. Well, thank you again, Dindo. That was um, political analyst Dindo Manhid joining us this morning, giving, giving us his insight about uh, President Aquino's sauna that will happen later today. Mm -hmm.